yeah, change the spatial discretization or change the time discretization, right? So I let me let me explain both cases. So first of all, fold over is not the only way to integrate differential equations. If you look at MATLAB's OD45, it is using something that is a lot better than fold over. Not only it is more accurate, it's fourth order and fifth order, but also the stability region is different. For example, there is a well-known Runge Kata scheme called RK4, fourth order Runge Kata scheme, whose stability region for real of lambda t and the imaginary of delta t lambda, the same thing, is something like that. Right, so for the Runge Kata scheme fourth order, the scheme is stable in this region, which actually includes all these points we are talking about lying on the imaginary axis. So one solution is just to use RK4 to solve the equation. It'll be slightly more lines of code you need to write, but like no problem. Or just to use OD45, you'll be okay. All right, so that is one solution. Change time discretization. Another potential solution is change spatial discretization. Spatial discretization. All right. So, for example, let's do a trade-off. Instead of using instead of using uh, this is D, instead of using the more accurate central difference scheme, let's use I plus one minus UI over delta T. Let's bias towards one side to see what does it change stability. We know it makes the accuracy worse, but can it make stability better? Right, so sometimes we have to do a trade-off between stability and accuracy. So in this case, we plug in the same uh, free expansion here. Ui is equal to summation k of u hat of k e to the j k i delta x. We get d u hat of k dt on the left-hand side. So this is from here plus u times u hat of k from here and uh, uh, exponential of j k delta x minus 1 over, oh, so this is delta x, over delta x equal to 0. Right, is it is it clear how I got this? This is basically plugging i plus 1 into here and factor it out. The common term that is e to the j k i delta x got pulled out, right, from both the DUDT and also this term and also this term. So we are, we are left with this. And uh, what we have is du hat of k dt equal to minus u, this guy over here, times u hat of k. Now this is our lambda. Any idea where it is on the complex plane? So let's draw the complex plane. And hopefully it is on this side, so let's draw it a little bit like that. So real of lambda, imaginary of lambda. All right. E to the j k delta x. And again, remember, k times delta x ranges from minus pi to pi just because of the range of k and the relation between n and delta x. So n times delta x equal to 2 pi, and k goes from minus n over 2 to n over 2 minus 1. So e to the j times something that ranges from minus pi to pi goes in where on the complex plane? So let's say just a jx, jx. What is it? 
It's a unit circle, exactly. That's the unit circle. Okay, as x goes from um, when x is minus pi, it's over here, and uh, you go over here and goes all the way to here. That's a unit circle. Okay, unit circle minus one is going to shift it to here. So, so that's this. And uh, okay, so minus one is going to shift it to here. So the green line is e to the jx minus one. All right. So this is the green green one, and that is multiplied. So actually, let me let me put it as lambda delta t. So so our analysis. We want to look at where this lambda delta t is, which is minus u times delta t over delta x times this green uh, this green circle over here. So we are expanding this green circle by a coefficient that is u times delta t divided by delta x. So is that going to make us stable for forward order? So, uh, so, so the this part is on this green circle, right? And we are multiplying the green circle. Remember, this is the origin. We are multiplying the green circle by this number. And if, for example, u is negative, if u is negative, then this number is a positive number. We are expanding this circle expanding or shrinking this circle depending on if this is positive or negative for example if if minus u delta t over delta x is equal to 0 0.5 what is it so this is minus 1 this is minus 2 if it's equal to 0 0.5 then my lambda delta t is going to be this circle shrinked by a factor of 2. So instead of this being minus 2, this will be minus 1. And instead of minus 1, it will be minus half. This is actually within the stability region of forward order, which is a circle that is twice as big as this. So this is the stability region. And all my eigenvalues lies on this smaller circle, which is completely contained in this big stability region, right? So, so this is just an example of minus u times delta t over delta x equal to 0.5. And in fact, as long as this number lies in between zero and one, the green circle is going to be contained in this black circle. Yes, that's a very good question. If, for example, you okay, so so if there are two cases where the scheme is unstable, one case is if u delta t over delta x is positive, which means when I take a minus sign, it's negative. What is the effect of multiplying the green circle by a negative number? What does it show up in the complex plane? It flips into the right half of the complex plane, right? So let's let's add a page. So again, uh, let's draw the stability region of four dollar like this: minus two, minus one. So let's draw the good case. So this is minus u times delta t over delta x. Again, in this case, this is called the CFL number, is within 0 and 1. So this is the green side. This is the green circle. The other case is minus u delta t over delta x is actually less than 0. It'll flip the green to the blue side. So it'll be a circle over here, which is completely unstable. The third case is minus u delta t over delta x is greater than 1. That means the green circle is going to expand beyond the stability region. It will be a red circle that is like that. 
Again, it is completely beyond the stability region. Therefore, it doesn't work. So the scheme we just uh, derived only works if u is negative and u times delta t over delta x has a magnitude less than 1. Okay, so in this case, the stability criterion so u negative and u delta t over delta x less than 1. So again, this is in this equation, this is called the CFL number. In both cases, our stability criterion involves the CFL number has a has a magnitude less than something. Yes? Um, Sorry, what's your question? What is the black circle? Oh, what, what is the black circle? The black circle is the stability region of forward Euler. It is imaginary of lambda delta t and the real of lambda delta t. So lambda is the eigenvalue of is is so no, is is the uh, is the coefficient of the differential equation of the ODE, and delta t is the time step of the ODE. Very good point. If if I like, I think you, your point is if I look at if I define x to be minus x, then in the differential equation, my time derivative is still the same. My spatial derivative flips some, so I get a u that is opposite. So that can be an excellent solution. Alternatively, or basically equivalently, instead of taking what we call, uh, where's the equation? Instead of taking, oh no, this is, uh, this is uh, the, okay. Instead of taking the forward difference involving i plus one and i, the equivalent of flipping sign, flipping the sign of x, is like taking a what difference? A backward difference, exactly. So, that is, now, if u is greater than 0, then the proper scheme I should be using is dui dt plus big U times ui minus u i minus 1 divided by delta x is equal to 0. That's taking a backward scheme. The stability criterion of this one would be u greater than 0 and also u delta t over delta x less than 1. Actually, you saved me a lot of analysis because the analysis here is exactly like flipping space and do the same analysis. That's great. Right? Okay, so in both cases, when we look at the discretized operator, and let me actually write it down here. So this is our scheme, partial, oh, I was trying to use red. Uh, plus, so dui dt plus u, ui plus 1 minus ui over delta x equal to 0. So in both cases, we are biasing the spatial points we are using towards which side? When u is less than 0, we are biasing towards the right side. When u is less than 0, we are biasing towards the left side. And do you rem remember how the differential equation behaves for positive or negative u? It's like a wave, right? And for different, uh, let me actually just uh, go back to, I think, lecture 2. No. Is it lecture three? No, maybe lecture one. Oh, is it demos? Yeah, convection. Okay, so we are using one, zero. So if we do that, we are having a positive U and the solution goes towards the right, right? If we have, uh, and in this case, when solution goes to the right, we are using a left biased grid points. On the other way, we are looking at the u minus 1. The solution goes towards the left. And we are 